it's time for some ramen. <laughs> Hey guys, Jay at Fat, and we've got Mick here from Stinger Australia. We've got some parts, and we've got a 2019 Dodge Ram to get some stuff, well, into rammed it. into it. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll go through, we've got Alpine Halo 307. Um, we've got a power pack amplifier. We may not need to use this power pack amplifier. We haven't found out yet whether this has the factory amplified system, but we do have, da -da -da, our Radio Pro 4 CH21. So this bad boy allows us to retain our steering wheel controls, factory amplifier if it's got it, factory reverse camera. Pretty much all of our factory features are in the car. We're putting in our nice Alpine Halo unit there. That's it. So as well, obviously to go along with that, we've also got the pack fascia kit, which is gonna mold it in, make it all look like it's a factory fit. Uh, we've also got our Alpine block off plate, which is gonna fill up our extra gap because obviously this thing is only a single din fit. Yep. Uh, then on top of that, we have a front camera. We also have a multi-view switching set for the Alpine. Uh, we also have another one that uh, Stinger Australia is bringing in, Mick. Yeah, which is our new third mount brake light and camera assembly. Now this is a basically a high mount replacement. It's brand new, straight out of the US, and allows us to add blind spot cameras to the left and right hand side behind the vehicle, as well as a cargo camera. So this means you can watch your load that's in the back of the actual truck itself whilst you're driving along, and you're not gonna have any issues with these pesky blind spots down the side of this being how big this thing is. I mean, it, it is, is huge. Yeah, the, the video doesn't do it justice, but it is massive. Yes, yeah, so, I massive. mean, you could fit, uh, I reckon you could fit quite comfortably jamming in there, almost, uh, I'd say eight, nine, ten people in there if you really have I'll to. I'll keep going. Easy. Yeah, that's no done. effort. Yeah, yeah. all right. So, yes. that's uh, pretty well everything we've got here to go in it, so. Yes. So basically this allows us to have our extra cameras. We've got a video switching unit, we've got our dash kit, new Alpine unit. So everything to upgrade this factory system. It is going to be a hell of an upgrade, that's for sure. So um, better start. Get into it. Doing some stuff. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. All right, here we are. So as you can see, this is the stock unit that's in here, this little dainty five inch screen um so that is definitely going to come out we're going to have about nine inches of screen so that's going to be a slight upgrade four extra four extra inches i think she'll be happy with that <laughs> talks i need to go get me talks All of the clips. There's a dash piece out. Well, that's left a bit of cavity, hasn't it? All right. We've got some sevens or what are they, five sixteenth in the US? No, nine thirty two. Imperial sucks. Imperial soldiers, on the other hand. No, no, they still suck. All right. Now, we should have a head unit. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's not much to it. It is. <laughs> yep, there's not a lot to that, that's for sure. Cool, let's go on. 
Um, well, that could be a slight dilemma. There is a massive bracket right there, and you can see it's not far behind. Um, yeah, that's definitely not enough depth for a head unit to fit, so this could be fun. Funny case of RTFM, or uh, read the effing manual. The OEM metal support will need to be modified to make room for the new radio. The right and the left bottom corners can be cut and removed. So, that means this metal bracket we've got in here, um, I'm going to have to cut that out because it actually can kind of see it's got some supports that run backwards. Um, and of course that's right where the radio's got to go. So, what I'm going to end up doing is doing a corner over here, doing a corner over here, cutting this piece out of it there, and then I'll take that whole center piece out um, and actually give us some space to mount this radio up and make it fit and look nice. So I guess I better get some uh, destruction tools out and make a mess. <sighs> it's that time. Here's our bits cut out. Get this, one. Get this one screw out, and we should uh, we should have some space in here. There's that bit that was stopping us. That metal plate just ran away from me. All right, there's our two plates out. So that one which was mounting this module, uh, which I will now just have to find a new spot for the module to mount, because that was only gonna mount off one single screw, which was a bit flimsy. So I'll do something a little bit better than that. Can probably just get mounted to the floor of this quite, quite easily by the looks of it. So that will be fine. So I can literally just go down on that spot down there. Cool, right, well, now I've got some space. I'll clean up those cuts and uh, start doing some head unit stuff. Murphy's Law says that if I don't clean up these edges, I'm going to cut the crap out of my hands, which not that I don't do that anyway, but maybe avoid a little more. <laughs> well, start getting the pillars and stuff out. Start running it and getting ready for um, the DAB antenna and the microphone. Of course, these are going to want to be a bit of a bitch. All right, so I've got our DAB antenna, microphone, and our GPS, an uh, GPS antenna. So I will um, start getting these ones all mounted up. I don't know how I manage to do this every time. Every damn time. I don't think I could have made much more of a mess out of that. <sighs> got him, yes!
here's our DAB, our microphone and the GPS antenna run through. Got our microphone mounted up. We've got our digital antenna mounted up and our GPS which is stuck up here. So that's that bit. I can uh, now start moving on to some wiring. <laughs> All right, wiring time. Now I've got everything sitting here that basically needs to be wired up. So we've got our pack module, which is the main harness, which is gonna be um, the amp interface and steering controller. And obviously this gets all our factory functions working. So that's that main harness. Then we've got this main harness, which is for the Alpine screen, along with the rest of its cables that go with that. Then I've also got the Alpine switch box, which is for the cameras. Now this is gonna be switching between our front and rear cameras that are in the car now. Then we're also gonna have that rear marker one, which is gonna be in the tail light, which is then gonna need another AV switcher to then switch between those. Uh, now, on top of that, Sam is about to do a front camera as well. So, lots of stuff to go in. There's that original unit, which is, uh, only a very short necklace style unit. So that's why that metal bracket inside the cars needed to be um, modified. On top of that, because we've got so many damn accessories and everything's gonna be running off a CAN bus triggered module, which is only a 200 milliamp relay output, a uh, 200 milliamp output, uh, we're gonna need a relay. So we'll throw the relay in as well, just so that we've got more than enough current there uh, that it's not gonna affect the CAN bus module. Uh, there's that one. <sighs> Start putting it all together. Check this out. Oh, we are very close. I'm just going to pop this on and do power up and check out, make sure everything is working. should have working cameras. So you're, you, you think it hey! Works? So you're easy. Really? Yep. See me still? Yep. See me still? Yep. So you can see that entire hoist. Yeah, it's not a bad view. Well, it's working. So I'm back on this one again. We uh, had an extremely late night the other night getting this all up and running. Uh, 
but unfortunately our USB slash HDMI adapter port had not arrived at the time. So, it's got to come back out again just to get the HDMI and stuff in. But I'm cool with that because we left at about 11.30 p.m. and uh, we were definitely ready to go home. Everything works, but we had to add that to it. And of course, like I said, it hadn't arrived. Uh, so, I was much happier about uh, finishing up the video today. So what we're going to do is, there's a factory USB port that's right down here. So I'm going to try and pop this panel out. Um, try and get the HDMI to release so I can get the new, um, the new one in. So it looks like this factory USB is, oh yeah, it's cable tied back here. Go and get some cutters and um, get this out. So those five, five seven mils or five nine sixteenths or whatever the hell they are in Imperial, which there was the four that ran across the top here. Get the torch. So you got one, two, three, four, and then there was two that were underneath. Um, so let's drop that down, but you can see I am held in by that cable, which is going to the USB port in there. And they are just behind there, tucked in and cable tied. So go get some cutters, cut that cable tie, and be able to get this, um, get this panel out. And that means we can get this new port mounted. So do that. So that is literally just a powered USB port. That's actually kind of cool. I am actually going to take a photo of that pin out. All right, cool. I will now get this panel out. There and there, they were the other two screws that I was talking about. So now we're out. Like I said, now I can actually get to the back of the port. I can pop this thing out because it feeds out from the front. And um, we'll go and get the new one put in. Cool. So I was slightly incorrect. I'm not taking that USB out, that stain. I'm taking the cigarette lighter out and uh, our port, which is. One of these install bay HDMI and USB ports. So it's got a mountable Siggy lighter adapter style port. So I'll get that in that one. Get this factory one out. We'll go from there. Now these can be a bit of an asshole when they want to be. I think I'm gonna need to go and get my pick tools get it to release properly. Oh, there we go. So that's our little trick. I'll show you these signal lighters. So you can see. Now, the way these work is they've got a couple of little clips, right? You've got this one here, that there. If you can see that properly. And then there's also one there on the other side. So these have to be lifted outwards slightly, which hold this in, which then makes this push through. And once that comes through, that can pop out. And then the, um, the plastic side can come out. So we'll get that bit popped all the way through. There we go. And then the plastic comes out. Just like that. So 
So now, this one can go in. We don't need that. All I need is that bad boy. Like I said, HDMI, USB, and that'll go straight in the hole. And it's even got a cover like the original. Beautiful. I like a bolt one. Awesome. All right, well, there's our port mounted. I'll um, get some tester tape out and I'll uh, cock tape these up. And then I can get the deck out, put this back in, feed it up, plug her in, and put it back together. And we'll show you this whole system all working. Um, we actually added some pretty cool little features in this. So uh, we've also added a uh, the high mount uh, at the rear, which is triggered by indicators. Uh, and there's also a switch that we've added in the face here, which is for the tub camera um, or you know the, the tray camera. So basically you can just see what's in the tray if you're carrying something and you need to look. Um, so I'll run all through all of that once I've got this back together, but um, get this bit sorted and we'll get onto that. Oh yeah, baby, Tessa. All right, there it is, all cloth taped. Start putting this thing back together. See how this goes. Let's see if I can do this without having to pull everything back out again. Bam. That's in. Now let's see if I can extract the old ones. That's two. And we can go back together. Yeah. All right. Is that main fascia. You know what? I'm going to move those side cutters because I almost stabbed myself in the hand. And the last thing I want to do is scratch something. Start getting the head unit bit back together. Oh, after I put the torques in the top. Back to the bottom of the torch. Couple little torques. All right. The screen. So you've got all these special mounts and stuff that lock it on. We've got a couple few little screws, little tricks. I'm sure there's more than enough videos around of people installing halos. So I'm just going to put it in. I need to magnetize my screwdriver or I'm going to lose all of the screws. This bit's pretty important. The head unit won't turn on without this bit in there. Bullshit. 
No, serious, 100%. It will not turn on without that bracket on. It's no. like there's a safety switch in the bracketry, and without that cover, won't do a thing. Wow. Our last bit. There it is. That's it. We're all back together. Now, I've also done a nice little load up screen. Another one. Ah, no way. There we go. Right, so we will go. Connected USB, USB device, it's not supported. Bam. So, oh, oh yeah, no, that's just as in for data, as in transferring data because you're using the camera connection. Okay. So if I wanted Apple CarPlay, how does it work now? Um, you have to go direct USB. So what you'll do uh, is take, take, take that, that out, out yeah. and plug it straight into the okay. phone. Oh, you know, because everyone needs Netflix in the car. Me neither. And son, remember, <laughs> it's your duty to please that booty. <laughs> Give it a shout, big boy. We will go into EQ. Oh, you're on a preset. Yeah. We did that because it was late. Uh, I would say up here. Is it the very, very top or the like the mid top? Very, very top. Very, very top. Alright, cool. It's alright. Alright. Oh, there's another thing. So these ones don't actually come with uh, steering controls from factory. Uh, no steering controls for the radio whatsoever. So the bonus with the uh, the pack harness is that I'm able to manually program. Um, so two of the buttons here that are actually designed for the MFD, I can actually program them to run the radio. Uh, when you're on the speedo, it doesn't matter. They're not uh, in the same position uh, or used, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the other bonus with the pack module is that you can program a long press. Uh, so that means I can use two buttons for four functions. So now I've got volume up and down programmed as short press, but then if I Hold the button, that's now programmed as track forward, track back. So that makes it nice and easy. I actually like that function. The fact that we can make it have steering controls when it's not supposed to is um, it's kind of cool. That's very cool. So next what I'll do is I'm going to run through all of the camera systems that we've got in the car. So we have, for a start, I'm going to need to start it. Standard, what we're going to do, obviously, click reverse, we've got our factory camera. That's fine. And that's a moving line style camera. So from there, we'll go back to park. Now, we've added a bunch of extras. So we've added, you can see the buttons down here. We've added an Alpine front camera. There it is. Now, this is also a, a mode dependent one. So you've got outside modes it splits it and actually does uh, almost 180 degree view so uh, it'll cut the middle out and give you sides go to the next one and it's a direct down so you can see this is the front bumper bar so if you want to park up really close to something you can do that then you've got back to standard panoramic shot so you can obviously see out the front of what's going on hit that again and that'll shut it down next we have our high mount rear light that we've added so there's a little switch back here, which will do our uh, tray camera. As you can see, we've got the tray in there. And the one that I actually quite like is our side, side cameras. So the high mount camera actually still runs three different view modes off the one camera. Uh, and it's basically got three tr separate triggers in it. So that one, you can trigger the center and the other two will trigger left and right sides, which have been hooked up to the indicators. So if I hit the indicator, We'll get a left hand picture. If I hit the right indicator, we get a right hand picture. Of course, as soon as you cancel, we'll go back to standard screen. So I think that's a really damn cool function. Um, I, I don't think I've ever installed anything that's actually like that, where it's got a split three-way camera, which is very cool. And just the fact that it automatically 
grabs your blind spots and you can see directly out of your blind spot. I think that's a great, great, great idea. So there you go, that's all the camera systems. Um, other than that, I mean, we've got our Alpine Halo, which, I mean, they're a pretty nice unit. They do quite a bit of stuff. We've got our digital radio, we've got all our uh, HDMI and everything running through, so nice. So it's better. It's still yeah. stock speakers, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's still a hell of a lot more. It's a hell of a lot better than um, what it sounded beforehand. Yeah. That is for sure. Yeah. All right, so there we have it, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's a Halo and a 2019 Dodge Ram. So um, I, uh, I'm now working here at Fat Audio Concepts. So I'm, uh, I'm going to need to do a bit of a walkthrough. Uh, if you have a look, mm, we got some cool stuff floating around here. And yes, that is a Countach. And a Vespa. <laughs> So thanks for watching guys, like and subscribe, I'll, uh, I'll be back soon with another video, but that's a 2019 Dodge Ram with uh, a halo, so thanks guys. Yeah, I can, we can cut that. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. No. Or I could just leave it. No, don't.